I've made some humiliating calls to women, but there is nothing compared to the calls I've made uh, to, to pizza places at 1 a.m. Nothing. Like I, I called up one place. I was on the road. I was doing a weekend. Almost every place is closed. I called this place up, and they're like, Hi, welcome to Mega, Megabyte Pizza. And I, my first question, I just go, What do you guys got that's good? Like a trucker that had seen a woman for the first time in 15 years. What do you guys got that's good? Can I smell it? You know? He, he goes, well, we got a really good thin crust. And I go, I'm going to need something a little thicker. <laughs> oh, well, we got a good deep dish. And I go, how deep is it? <laughs> and they're like, well, it's real deep. I'm like, is it cheesy? They're like, oh, it's cheesy. Like, he was getting into it. I'm like, I'm going to fuck this pizza guy when I see him. <laughs> he shows up to the hotel in the lobby. He's married. I... I grab the pizza, I go into the elevator, go up to my room, right before the doors shut, a married couple and their seven-year-old daughter follow in after me. I'm getting off on the fourth floor, they're getting off on the sixth floor. I get off on the fourth floor and I hear from the elevator, I hear the little girl go, I'm glad he's gone. I wasn't doing anything. I, I was literal. this is what she saw for, for four floors was me holding a pee. I wasn't, I didn't turn around and I was like, oogity boogity, the Easter Bunny doesn't exist. I was holding a pizza and she could sense my sad fatness, like the little kid from The Shining, like he's gonna eat that pizza over the toilet while crying. Food goes in his mouth, food goes out his butt, das taff, das taff. That's sad and fat backwards in case you haven't seen the movie. It's a great movie, fuck that little girl. This happened to me recently. A, a guy with a face tattoo spat on my car. Yeah. And when a guy with a face tattoo spits on your car, well, I mean, that's just something he gets to do. <laughs> no, normal guy spits on your car, like, hey, asshole, what the fuck? Guy with a face tattoo spits on your car, you're like, thank you so much for not shooting me. I really appreciate it. You, re you really could have murdered me. And I could tell you're a nice guy by the tears on your cheeks. <laughs> I went to my therapist early and I, I opened the door and he was drinking a monster energy drink, which isn't something you want a therapist to drink. Like Red Bull gives you wings, monster gives you a restraining order. I, I, I don't want an energy drink therapy. Like put it in a cup. Like, like have you ever gotten the root of why your dad never loved you? But have you ever gotten the root of why your dad never loved you to the extreme? And then he snowboards over the couch you're crying on. That's it. Um, how'd you guys meet? work it's so weird now like with the with the harassment stuff like now it's like don't talk to anybody at work but like back in the day you were trying to fucking finger bang her while she was just trying to get you a coffee well how do you think it happened it starts with a finger and then ends with a dick that's how you gotta build up and then you have four miracles finger dick miracle circle of life It is. <laughs> yeah. 2018, it's like, treat me like a human. 1974, convert this pussy to a PDF. <laughs> Been able to hook up with girls who are way more attractive than me, but every single girl has the same backstory. They just got done dating some lacrosse player. And they're like, you know, I don't need some guy with perfect teeth and piercing eyes and abs. I don't need abs. And then they fuck me and they're like, Oh, wait, I needed abs. It's like the end of an M. Night Shyamalan movie. It was abs the whole time. I didn't realize it. Now I'm stuck with the adventures of young Santa. So, I get a call from this girl the next day. Whenever I get a call from a girl I like, I sound like an 1800s gold prospector. I'm like, hot diggity dog, there's pussy in California. Hey, I had a good time last night. And I'm like, oh, I had a good time too. She's like, yeah, I just got a question though. Uh, after I went upstairs and you were downstairs, um, did you get scared and take a shit in my garage? <laughs> Apparently later in the night, someone took a shit in her garage. And when her landlord asked her about it, she was like, you know, the, probably the guy I made out with. Probably him. <laughs> the whole time I was on a date, I'm like, this guy shits in garages. 
He had a garage shitting aura. So I told her, I'm like, no, I didn't shit in your garage. Let me tell you something, fellas. If you have to tell a woman, no, I didn't shit in your garage, you are not going to fuck her. Not, not in the history of fucking has there ever been. How did I meet your grandfather? Well, at first I thought he shat in my garage. Also, did you get scared and take a shit? In my, is that, what she, is that what she thinks I do when I get scared? We're on my great makeup, but now I'm down here alone. Oh, it's happening again! God, we come on too strong. That's our, like, like and, and it's romantic comedies. They've all, they've all fucked guys up. They're all, they've all messed them up. It's, it's always like a guy who's like chasing a girl to an airport or, or showing up outside her window with her, with a stereo over, over his head. Like, like that's not how you win a woman back. That's how you get someone to stop from leaving Scientology, you know? <laughs> Like you're never gonna like hear like you're never gonna hear like a like a vows at a wedding where the guy's like I remember the first time I laid eyes on Rachel, I was in a bush outside her apartment. I had been asking her out for about six months straight. She finally agreed to an 11 a.m. meeting with me at Jimmy John's, during which she told me she wasn't ready to see anyone right now. She needed to focus on herself. Well, turns out from the 16 social media accounts I follow her on, she was spending a lot of time with this guy, Brian. I paid a private investigator. Turns out Brian didn't pay taxes from the year 2013 to 2015. I know some of the IRS, Brian gets audited. Now Brian can't take her on this long vacation. He gets so depressed, takes a bunch of pills, kills himself. She feels terrible. That's where I swoop in. <laughs> I built her self-esteem up, but not so much that she thinks that she can do better than me, and, well, we've been together ever since. <laughs> How long have you been together for? A couple months. I can tell you're clutching onto him. You're like, I can tell the last guy fucked up. I don't know why. Is that true? Did the last guy fuck up? Because you're holding onto him like you're a bear and he's a honeycomb, you know? <laughs> he did, right? Yeah, you can tell. This is, that's a good thing. It's good he fucked up because you don't want a guy who's like, what, who did you date before this? Oh, he worked at the UN and he went to Ghana to help kids and we still talk and you're like, fuck this motherfucker. <laughs> you want a guy who's like, he, he forced me to dress as a clown and then put me in a tiny car. You're like, okay, I can miss a couple anniversaries. So. Who's crazier, your fiance or your dad? Your dad, right? <laughs> I can tell. What's the craziest thing your dad's done? I always get nervous about questions like that because you never make, well, he beat the shit out of my mom. And you're like, no, 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 I don't mean, I don't mean that. I don't know, this is, went a different way. Comedy show, back to comedy show. I'm a, I'm a big scary movie fan. My problem with scary movies though, you know, scary movies, black people die first, but fat people die worst, you know? Like, in a scary movie, there's always a black guy going like, oh shit, what, and he's killed. But fat people, we're always doing something to him, but we're always like, hey guys, wait up! <laughs> Like, we make the sound of cheese being made with the staff. <laughs> hey guys, the store just had regular Doritos and not Cool Ranch, so I made my own ranch from home. Why is that guy wearing a hockey mask since the summer? Oh shit, I'm getting killed! <laughs> <laughs> I, I was nervous that joke wasn't gonna work because I don't know if you guys have black people here, so I... <laughs> Remedies documentary series on Scientology. I don't know if you guys seen it. It's just a normal documentary, but then it cuts to Leah Remini talking about it, and it's the weirdest juxtaposition. We're gonna be like, in 2008, David Miscavige, head of Scientology's wife, was abducted and never seen again. And then he cuts to Leah Remini, and she's like, that's messed up. <laughs> you couldn't do that to me. I'm from Brooklyn, not for all the eggplant parmesans in the world. <laughs> I'd love to see her do that, but with every movie, like the two kids are about to kiss on the beach in Moonlight for the first time, and right before their lips meet, they cut to her, and she's like, holy cannoli, they was gay the whole time! My Uncle Anton was gay, but we don't talk no more. After he did my hair, he put her on highlights, he made me look like a hobo when I'm the queen of queens. And then she turns into a meatball and rolls down a hill. That's how, I go to this movie theater in LA a lot called uh, The Arc Light, and it's, uh, it's a great movie theater. And before the movie, there's usually a guy or a girl in their 20s, early 20s, and they're film majors, or they're trying to write movies, and they come out, 
when they introduced the movie, they're like, our movie today is Lady Bird, it's starring Laurie Metcalf, it's won seven Outer Critics Circles Award, and it's my favorite this year, so enjoy it. And they do it in this bubbly effervescence, and, and you're like, I'm really excited about watching this movie. Well, I went to this movie to go see Thor, and they didn't have one of those guys or girl. Instead, this dude in his mid-50s walks out. He looks like if a DMV gave birth to a pair of sweatpants. Like, there's a microphone. He literally, he grabs the microphone and he just goes... <sighs> uh, today's movie is... Uh... Thor, uh, Ragnarok, or Ragnarok, Ragnarok, it's, uh, starring Chris Hemsworth, and, uh, oh, what else? What else? He said, what else? He hadn't even finished the first fucking sentence yet. I've never seen a, a guy introduce a movie while going through a divorce. <laughs> Thor's powers include superhuman, hubris, uh, Thor's powers include superhuman strength, Agility, eating Christmas dinners alone, uh, apologizing for things he didn't do wrong. You know, they say to lift Thor's hammer, you gotta be noble. Well, to lift my ex-wife's skirt, all you gotta be is a California pizza kitchen waiter named Brian who takes acting lessons on the side. Stay tuned for the post credit scene. Nick Fury shows up. Nick Fury is what she calls Brian's cock. I went to a uh, polyamory party. Um, uh, yeah, exactly. That laugh is right. I, I had a gig. These guys did a gig, and I, I was actually I was opening up. I, I was opening up for a burlesque show, I believe. You know the difference uh, between burlesque and stripping is uh, forty pounds, forty pounds, and uh, and uh, strippers don't lie to themselves. That's the big difference. So, whatever. I go to this polyamory party, right? Um, I, uh, I'm doing this polyamory party, and I go there, and, and polyamory people, it's like many partners, many loves, or, you know, it's all bullshit, but it's like, imagine if you got kicked out of a Ren fair for being too slutty, you know? Uh, and uh, somebody's quiet, somebody really wants to take polyamory down. So I made up, there's a cute girl there, and I start talking to her, and I was like, oh, are you polyamorous? And she goes, no, 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 but I am in a pet play, and I'm like, oh, maybe that's not what I think it is. She goes, it's when I walk my partner around in a leash. I'm like, it's exactly what I think it is. <laughs> Can we do sea animal play where I forget to feed you and you just die in a corner? <laughs> the thing is, you meet enough of those people and that's what turns you into a Republican. In the beginning, you're like, I believe in universal health care. I believe gay marriage. I believe we need to stop invading all these foreign countries. And then you meet somebody who's like, I believe you should be able to date a man, woman, or houseplant. And you're like, maybe some stem cell research is wrong. Uh, and they're like, I... Sometimes I pretend my wife's a fish and I finger her gills, and you're like, I like some Kirk Cameron movies. Uh, they're, they're like, I put a jewel in my belly button, I pretend I'm a treasure troll. I'm like, let's invade Iraq again, let's do it. We didn't get it right the first time. That one was mixed. Uh, but guys, the worst one night stand of my life I had last June at my friend's wedding in Vermont. Beautiful wedding, big white tent, log cabins and woods around the tent. And at this point, my friends are either really nerdy or really married, right? And I'm like, the last option at these things, you know? So this girl, who I'd been talking to earlier, comes up to me and goes, I wanna fuck you in the woods in 20 minutes. And I'm like, finally, something good's gonna happen to me in the woods. You know what I mean? It's been one nightmare after the next. That's neither here nor there, let's move on. I leave the tent with this girl. We find an area of woods to fuck it, but I can't maintain an erection because I can hear all my nerdy ass friends partying at the wedding. Like, you try to maintain an erection when you can hear your best friend go, I think Ant-Man is the most underrated of the Avengers. It's impossible. So I do the ultimate loser move. I come soft. I call it the Giamatti and uh, the kind of falls off. And if, okay, if, this is the part of the show that gets scientific. I, the, the thing, when you have a soft dick, but you still come, it pushes the condom off inside. It, the whole area becomes microwave mashed potatoes. And, and, and so the condom fell off inside her, and I had to tell her. And there's no good way to tell a woman that a condom is inside. They don't talk about that in sex ed. It's, it's like, this condom didn't work, but those earrings sure do, girl. Put it up. That doesn't work. So I told her, I'm like, hey, I'm so sorry. The condom must have fallen off. And she goes, what? 
I'm like, this is not going to be like how I thought it would play out. I'm like, yeah, I'm so sorry. The, the condom must fall off. And then she did the scariest shit anyone's ever done to me. She doesn't break eye contact, leans in, digs down, hooks in, and goes, there's a mess inside me! Which is the scariest thing I've ever heard a woman say, a man say, an animated tree in a Disney movie warning you of the journey ahead say. And then I go, I'll pay for the abortion! Which also didn't help. I really put the planned cart before the parenthood horse on that one. And then she goes, ugh, all you Brooklyn boys are the same. And I'm like, what the fuck is happening right now? You sound like a character from a 50s musical. Like, all you Brooklyn boys coming inside me. I'm going back to Oklahoma. And I'm like, I'm sorry. And then again, she goes, there's a mess inside me. Ah, mess. And she ran into the woods. Like, we were in woods, but she found more woods to run into. I'm like, holy shit, I just fucked a girl. And she became an urban legend. Like... Every full moon, you can still hear a dick in the condom, man. Thank you guys. Have a great night.